When people first go gluten-free, they run to the grocery store, find all the gluten-free versions of the wheat-based products they normally eat, the bread, buns, crackers, pasta, snacks, all of that. And then they go to the checkout line and talk about sticker shock. It's not like you have a choice, but why did your grocery budget just triple? Unfortunately, This is how it is. Wheat is subsidized by the government, plus more people eat it than people who eat gluten-free. So it's like a double whammy against us. Knowing this doesn't resolve the problem at hand, though. Most people cannot afford for their budget to double, let alone triple. Today, I am going to share with you my five tips for making eating gluten-free as affordable as possible while also overcoming common obstacles I see regularly in my practice. Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Marion Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook, Let's dive in. A change in our lifestyle is difficult, even more so when we truly do not have a choice. Going gluten-free forever isn't something anyone actually wants. It is very limiting and it's expensive straight up. There are two problems that I see that compound the issue at hand, and those are people don't know how to cook and or they don't like vegetables. When you don't know how to cook and you don't like vegetables, making your grocery budget reasonable is going to be extremely difficult. First, let's talk about cooking. I used to be a bad cook, like burning water bad. When I would try to cook a meal, something would be undercooked while another thing was overcooked and something else was cold. It was that bad. When I was on my journey trying to reclaim my health, I had to learn how to cook. I had no choice in the matter. In the matter. So with, with help from my mom and my best friend, I started learning the basics. From there, I turned to cookbooks. I got tired pretty quickly of expensive recipes that took two hours to make and tasted bland. I decided to try simple recipes, add in more spices, and eventually I started creating my own recipes. Now I'm an author of a cookbook. I have over 250 recipes between the cookbook, my website, and the variety of meal plans that I have available for my clients. My dad is still amazed at how far I've come and loves to remind me at how bad I used to be. It was really bad and it is pretty comical, I will have to say. When I started creating my own recipes, I decided I wanted to design them for people who didn't like to cook and or didn't know how to cook. I wanted recipes that were simple with very few ingredients and lots of flavor. I think I do a pretty good job at it. And if I can learn how to do it, so can you. Now, we got to talk about not liking vegetables, okay? When you know how to cook vegetables, they can taste amazing. If you're relying on frozen vegetables you boil into mush, well, yeah, those are gross. And if you don't believe in salting your food, then yeah. They're going to be pretty darn bland. However, when you learn how to cook vegetables properly, it's like a whole new world opens up. Will you like every single vegetable out there? Probably not. Even I don't. There are some out there that I personally would rather not eat. And However, sometimes if I'm out at a healthy restaurant and I see something new, I'll usually try it. It can taste pretty great there, and sometimes I can recreate it at home, and then I'm like, hey, new vegetable. Sometimes I can't. That's okay. If you're like, no, no, Marion, you don't get it. Vegetables are gross, all of them. I do have a couple of tips to help ease you into eating more of them, because there's no way to eat healthy and have an affordable budget without them, so you got to start somewhere. 
we're going to first start with a clean fruit and vegetable powder. The reason I like this option is because it is literally the easiest way to get all the fruits and vegetables you need in a day in a scoop. And over the years, this has been a proven strategy for my clients who don't like vegetables. They will humor me and they'll add it to things like their smoothies or their yogurt or something. They'll add it to something. And then after three weeks, I get a text or an email saying, the weirdest thing just happened today. I craved a salad or some other vegetable, right? It's great. It's exciting for me because I'm like, yes. Once you start getting them in, your body is like, oh, I like that. I need that. And then you start craving it. It's pretty cool, honestly. The second way you can kind of ease into vegetables, right, is smoothies. It's surprising, really, but not only can you add like the powder to your smoothies, but you can hide actual vegetables in your smoothies if you do them correctly. I know some people that will add frozen cauliflower and carrots because they're easy to hide. Personally, I like to add dark leafy greens, a small handful. A small handful gives you a good dose of vitamins and minerals without having it be an overpowering taste to the smoothie. You don't need as much as you think to be healthy. So talking about this, I have seen some of these health gurus and recipe people on YouTube making smoothies and they'll fill up the blender container halfway to three quarters of the way with greens. They'll do like half a banana, throw in some seeds and some almond milk and expect people to think it tastes amazing. They're like, this is how you make a smoothie. It's so good. First of all, it's going to smell disgusting, straight up. Secondly, that doesn't taste good. It will be earthy, to put it nicely, okay? And if somebody is new to smoothies and is trying to be healthy, this is a surefire way to turn them off. I've seen this happen over and over again, and it's so gross, and people are like, no, I'm not going to do it. So no, don't start there. And actually, I'm not even there. That's, that's disgusting. Don't do that. Now, we've got those two hurdles out of the way. Let's talk about my five tips for making a gluten-free diet affordable. Do you have your notebook and pen ready? It's that time. Number one, make things yourself. You need to learn how to cook. And we've already talked about this, but the absolute most affordable way to eat gluten-free is to cook most of your meals at home. And the more you outsource, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, am I saying you have to chop your own broccoli or even spiralize your own vegetable noodles? No, but hands down, the more you do yourself, the more money it's going to save you every single month. Number two, let's get away from the gluten-free replacements and start eating real food. Those boxed foods are tripling your grocery budget. But if you're eating mostly real food, and I'm talking fruits, vegetables, proteins, and healthy fats, 80 to 90% of the time, your budget's only going to increase maybe, maybe $50 to $100 a month. It's really, really reasonable. Okay. Stick to gluten-free whole grains. So this kind of goes with number two, but I made it its own separate thing because It's like really easy to eat a $3 box of gluten-free mac and cheese, right? In one sitting. So that's like $3 for a meal gone. And that doesn't sound like much, but when you can eat, you know, if you want to make like a dollar in quinoa, maybe $1.50. I don't, I don't know. I think it's even less than that. And that will feed you for like three or four meals. Even as a family of three, quinoa will last us two or three days if I make one cup of quinoa and cook it. So when you learn how to cook gluten-free grains like rice, quinoa, amaranth, sorghum, cassava, millet, teff, and buckwheat, it will save you so much money, okay? I'm talking like hundreds of dollars. Number four, meal planning. Learning how to meal plan in a way that is doable saved me $600 a month for a family of three eating gluten-free. It is 
ridiculous how much money is basically thrown in the trash when you don't meal plan. My very first course was actually teaching my clients how to meal plan and eat healthy at the same time. It is now included in my therapeutic food framework, but it is an essential part of the coaching that I provide. In my opinion, it is a must-learn skill. I'm a huge fan of flexible meal planning where you pick two breakfasts, two lunches, and four dinners for the week. When you do this, there's enough variety to prevent food boredom while ensuring you actually eat what you buy. When you eat what you buy, your grocery budget and your monthly food budget overall goes down dramatically. You don't have to eat anything on a specific day. You just know that you've picked meals for the week that you like and have decided, and then the day of, you can decide which one because all of the ingredients are there. I have found that flexible meal planning works best for like 99% of people versus being extremely rigid and only eating what you plan for that day on that day. Sometimes things just don't sound good on that day. Like maybe you want tacos on Monday and you want pasta on Wednesday. Like that's okay. When you're that rigid, it actually sets you up for failure and it's just completely unrealistic. And last but not least, number five. Typically, it's it's really fun <laughs> to want to do try all of the things. But what I found works is when you swap out your favorite sauces for gluten-free versions first, and then you add in new stuff later. We are creatures of habit. We like what we like, and we rarely deviate from that unless we're bored. So making sure that you have these things on hand that you know you will eat on a regular basis and you like will save you a ton of money because you'll actually eat it right? Like as of now, I probably have 20 different sauces that I can choose from between my fridge and my pantry for dinner. I typically pick like the same five, but I can always get adventurous and pick out a new sauce whenever I feel like it. If I'm like really bored, I always have something on hand, but I didn't start there. Start there. Like like I said, I I stick to like five of them normally. And then over the years, I kind of go to Whole Foods and I get like stars in my eyes. And I'm like, this looks amazing. And I grab it and then my wallet cries because I get all excited and I try all these new things, right? But you can't start there. Those are my five tips for making a gluten-free diet affordable. And those are, again, cook meals for yourself, skip the gluten-free replacements and stick with real food, learn how to cook gluten-free whole grains, meal plan, and then make sure you have your go-to sauces on hand before getting adventurous. I know that this is a difficult transition, but I promise you, you're going to feel so much better on the other side and have the hang of it in no time. And if you're like, Marion, would you please just do all of this for me so I don't have to do it myself? Schedule a discovery call with me. In this Zoom call, you can share with me your story and struggles, knowing that I've been there and I've walked through that before you, and I can truly empathize with what you're going through. And then I can share with you all the resources I have for you to make this time so much easier. So all you have to do is go to the store, come home, and cook. I can do that for you, and I would love to have the opportunity to share with you what that looks like. So you can either go to the show notes and click on a discovery call with Marion, or you can just pull up the internet right now and go to www.roadtolivingwhole, that's W-H-O-L-E, dot com backslash health dash coaching, and sign up there. I hope you found this episode helpful, and I will meet you here next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, 
you can schedule a free consult through www.roadtolivingwhole.com backslash health dash coaching backslash. Until next time, friend. Bye.